Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the third lecture video for Unit 3 on populations. So far we've been talking about populations generally speaking, but for the rest of the unit we're going to zoom in and look at human population dynamics. Um, because we are humans, and humans are probably the most influential species on the planet, not to brag. Um, so it's important that we, we understand deeply how our populations grow and change, how that differs from country to country, and the impact that we're having on the world around us. So if we look at the human population growth over the past a couple hundred thousand years. First modern humans appeared about two to three hundred thousand years ago. Um, and since then the population has been slowly, slowly growing throughout the different ages. Uh, you can see the Black Death comes around here in like 1500s or 1200s or something like that. And then in the last 200 years or so, the population has absolutely boomed. Um, and there is a reason for that. Uh, well, two main reasons. One, this little blip you see here, bloop, up, doesn't seem like much. Um, but that's what got the ball rolling, and that was the advent of agriculture. Uh, came around in Mesopotamia in the Fertile Crescent about 10,000 years ago, and what that allowed people to do is nomadic tribes and cultures that formerly had to travel around to find food could now start to settle down as they learned the ways of domestication and farming, and that also allowed them to build larger populations, and these populations would sort of um, spread and grow larger and larger and larger over time. Uh, thousands of years later, we learned about germs and poop and how to clean ourselves and how to not uh, die because we didn't take a shower, etc. Uh, so we see a lot of improvements in sanitation, and we also see ex um, extraordinary developments in medicine with uh, vaccine, antibiotics, penicillin, etc., which is going to increase quality of life, reduce infant mortality, and increase the average lifespan. All of these things are going to contribute to growing human populations. Until today... Um, uh, now we ask this question, okay, as our population continues to grow, as we boom and we surge past 8 billion uh, by 2025, uh, are we going to exceed Earth's carrying capacity, right? Malthus and others uh, suggest that yes, that is going to happen, right? Our resources are growing linearly and our population is growing exponentially. We're going to outpace that and we are going to uh, have some serious problems because of it. Um, you might make the argument that we are approaching that point. A lot of people in the 70s thought so. Um, but we haven't made it there yet, um, and some would argue that we never will because uh, and humans are incredibly creative and innovative, and we can actually design ways to increase the carrying capacity of the Earth while uh, decreasing the uh, amount of resources that a, one individual needs, right? Uh, we see a lot of that happening with farming in the past hundred years. The Green Revolution totally changed the way farming um, happened and, and the efficiency of it. And now with uh, other things around the corner like GMOs and hydroponics, um, uh, you know, vertical automated farms, things like that, we could really see some significant changes um, in terms of food production. And people like Elon Musk are, are championing renewable energies to help uh, re re reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. Um, and today, uh, most of the people can be found in... Um, a number, what is this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, so more than half the population is found in 11 different countries, with China and India having the most. Um, everybody else, all the remaining countries, make up about three, the other 3 billion. Remember, we're working out of a total of 7.8 billion. So India and China alone make up about one-third of that whole population, more than that even. Uh, so these two are the two behemoths, and you can see that same thing. The larger the square, the larger the population. Uh, North America, South America, uh, Europe, Africa, and Asia. You can see Asia takes up more than half of the square with China and India making up more than 25% of the whole rectangle. So uh, China and India are, are doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. Uh, but they're not alone. And these countries are all growing too. Um, uh, we can also look at patterns of population density. We see some interesting things develop. Oh, look, there's the Nile River and the River Delta. Uh, oh, there's the Himalayas. Um, Oh, uh, you can see the little spots of cities where more, more people live. Um, generally, humans tend to live along coasts and near freshwater sources, um, and they tend to avoid places like deserts, dense jungles, and tundras. Um, but you can see that depending on where you go, you can find different densities of people around the world. But that doesn't tell us anything about how each one of these countries is changing over time. Uh, it just tells us how many people are in each country. What we need to look at is the growth rate. Right? Uh, the growth rate uh, is going to tell us how fast that population is growing. Countries in yellow, like the United States, are growing relatively slowly, while countries in orange and red um, are, tend to be growing a lot faster. 
um, and we're going to start to break down the reasons why uh, for, for those differences, uh, especially as we start talking about something called the demographic transition model. It has a lot to do with wealth, has a lot to do with the age of these countries, um, and it has a lot to do with technology as well. So uh, what factors are going to influence uh, the rate at which a population grows? Uh, you could probably name six off the top of your head, and they're probably all correct. Um, you could look at the uh, rate of infant mortality, the general birth and death rates um, for the whole population, how long does the average person live for, how, what is the education like, um, is there family planning, is, do, do uh, females in the population have access to things like birth control and contra contraception, uh, what age on average do people get married and start families and start having kids, and what's the nutrition like. Um, I'm going to talk about a, a couple of these. Um, because um, there are some interesting patterns you may not be aware of. Um, and one of those is the importance of education for women, specifically. Women, obviously, education is important for everybody. I'm not trying to say that uh, education isn't important for men, but education plays a particularly important role for women, especially in regards to the world population, because in some places, women don't have equal access to education. Um, some places, they spend hours gathering water while the men go to school, or um, it's a uh, culture where the, the husband is dictating the actions of the wife and, and she's not allowed to go to school. And ultimately what that does is it limits their uh, female's access to education. And as a result of that, if we look, there's 750 million adults uh, who are illiterate around the world. Uh, that's about one-tenth of the population. Of those, uh, about two-thirds are women, right? 55% are uh, adult women and 8% um, are uh, youth, female youth, right? Combine that together, you get, um, what, 63%, which is almost two-thirds. So almost two-thirds of the people who are illiterate on this planet are women, and that's not coincidence, right? There's reason for that. Um, because when women don't go to school, they uh, can get pregnant at a younger age. They can get married younger, start younger families, and because they're younger, they have more time before um, the, their life ends that they can have more babies. And you can see this uh, in data as well. On the x-axis, we've got the percent of girls in secondary school. And on the y-axis, we've got the total fertility rate. Total fertility rate is a number that represents the average number of babies per woman in a population. So uh, if the total fertility rate is 1, the average woman in this population has 1 baby. And you can see that as uh, in, in different populations, as more and more of the women in that population are enrolled in secondary school, high school or even um, higher education, right? Uh, the total fertility rate tends to drop. So in areas where the women aren't in, in school, the, they tend to be more babies per woman. Whereas in areas where uh, the women do tend to be in school, uh, the number of babies tends to be fewer, significantly fewer. Why is this so, why is this the case? Um, uh, why, why is education so particularly important for women in our population? Um, and this is the same graph here, it's just got specific countries dotted on it. So what's the deal with education? Well, uh, let's take a look at a, at a, a woman's life in maybe a, a country like Ethiopia where she doesn't have access to education for whatever reason that might be. Um, I mean, she doesn't have access to things like contraception, um, right? So at around age 15 on average, when a woman goes through puberty, they can start having babies. And let's say they can have seven to eight babies every decade. Right, and they live for three and a half decades. Right, uh, three and a half times seven—that's like what, twenty-five babies over the course of their life as an absolute maximum. Right, most people are not having twenty-five babies, but you could have a baby in theory, like um, every one point three years or something like that. Um, and so, in the, in the sorry, let me get back on track. In the case where a, a woman doesn't have access to education, she's hitting puberty around age fifteen. She's not in school. Um, it's likely that she will uh, settle down, um, get married, start a family to try and find stability, and start having kids at a young age. And it may seem odd to you. Oh, I can't imagine starting a family at age fifteen. But it's actually much more common than you realize if you look around the world. Um, and because they're starting at a younger age, they can have more babies over the course of their life. As opposed to uh, a situation, let's say, in a country like Peru, where they, uh, women do have access to education uh, as a general rule, right? Uh, what's going to happen is, well, when they hit 15, they're still in school. Um, and they might even go into college as well. So they're not going to focus on having a family until they get out of school. So that's going to delay the, um, uh, the baby-making process for at least a decade. 
right, until you're about 25, right? And then you might start having babies in your late 20s or early 30s. Um, and, but when you start having those babies, you have access to contraception, birth control or condoms, and also family planning with, through, through services like Planned Parenthood that allow you to space your births out appropriately and help, help guide you through that and provide resources to do that. So instead of having you know, as many babies as you possibly could, uh, you're only having as many as you want, which might only be two or three. Um, and so access to education and contraception are severely going to uh, reduce the total fertility rate of the females in the population, which is going to slow population growth. Um, and just a reminder, total fertility rate is the average number of children that a woman produces in a population throughout her life. Um, I might have said per year earlier. That's my, my mistake. It's throughout the course of her entire life. So uh, take a look at th this map shows total fertility rate of different countries around the world. Um, blue is pretty low with zero to one. Purple is pretty high, z seven to eight babies per woman on average. The United States uh, has a total fertility rate of about 1.8, uh, whereas the world average is about 2.4. The highest is uh, the country of Niger, which is about 7.2 babies per woman, and the lowest is South Korea, about 1.2 babies per woman. So you can see there are some pretty uh, different patterns in terms of um, fertility rates, and there's reasons for that. Um, take a look at this map that I showed you earlier with the growth rates, right? Do you see any similarities between total fertility rate and growth rates? You should. Countries that have half fast growth rates are going to have to have high fertility rates, right? That means more babies to add to the population. Um, those two metrics are closely linked. Uh, in regards to uh, fertility, um, there's a term that we refer to as replacement level fertility, which is basically the total fertility rate required to uh, offset the number of deaths in a population to help keep the population size stable. So if we got time on the x-axis and number of babies per woman on the y-axis, the total fertility replacement level uh, is about 2.1. So that means there are probably about 2.1 deaths per year or something like that. Um, if our fertility rate is at 3.0, is the population going to be growing, shrinking, or staying the same? It's going to be growing because if we're producing three babies per year, but there's only about 2.1 deaths per year, then they're going to be, quote unquote, adding 0.9 babies every year. Meanwhile, if uh, later on our TFR drops to 1.5, is our population going to grow, shrink, or stay the same? Now it's going to shrink because um, we're only adding 1.5 babies to the population, whereas we're losing about 2.1 individuals to death every year. So what factors influence total fertility rate? I already talked about um, education and contraception, right? Um, but the age at which women first get pregnant is important. Education can delay that, but also the marriage laws and customs can delay that as well. Um, education is also really important because it might mean that a woman learns a little bit more about uh, if she takes sex education. She learns more about her body. Men learn more about their bodies uh, in terms of uh, safe sex practices and um, being able to plan for the families that you want uh, and plan pregnancies as opposed to having surprise pregnancies. It also might mean that, hey, if the, if the husband and, or, or the man and the woman in the relationship are um, focused so much on their career, they may not, to have, may not decide to have any babies at all. Uh, but there are also government policies uh, such as the China one-child policy uh, that we'll talk a little bit about in the next video. Um, one of the most important factors influencing TFR is going to be wealth. Uh, developed countries, wealthier countries like the United States, Canada, France, etc., tend to have lower replacement level fertilities um, because uh, quality of life tends to be better with high income, high industrialization, access to better health care and technology. People tend to live longer, uh, whereas in developing countries, uh, we see the opposite going on. Um, and so uh, TFR levels tend to be higher. Uh, but as they say, uh, with more money comes more problems. So uh, these individuals, while they might have lower population growth rates, uh, they are going to produce more CO2 emissions per person. In the United States, we have a very lavish lifestyle. Uh, we may be wealthier on average than a country like India, but our carbon footprint and our CO2 emissions are uh, 10 times greater than that of a, a family living in India. Um, and the reason for that is almost exclusively due to uh, the way that Americans live their lives. Um, and the choices we make going on vacations, things like that. I'm not trying to shame anybody for doing those things. I do those things myself, right? But it's important to keep that in mind when we think about our impact on the world around us 
we need to think about our lifestyle as well. So uh, when we think about factors like education, like family planning, which one do we think is most important in terms of um, causing a population to grow? Well, I just told you, it's wealth, right? Wealth is going to make all of these things better. It's going to make uh, access to better education, access to better nutrition. It's going to allow um, <coughs> family planning. Um, uh, medicine and healthcare is going to be better, so birth death rates will be down, birth rates will be up, so wealth is the key here. And you can see this in a graph, growth rate of the population on the x-axis, and uh, basically the what is called a gross national income per capita at purchasing power parity, which is a total mouthful and basically means how much money does the average person have to spend each year. Um, and so you can see as the, um, the patterns that uh, the wealthier countries and wealthier people tend to have uh, slower growth rates than countries that don't have as much money. And it's for all those reasons that we just talked about. Uh, if we look at the wealth of a country by looking at the average purchasing power of an individual per year, um, dark countries tend to have higher wealth, lighter countries have lower wealth, and we compare that to the fertility rate, right? Where these red and orange countries have higher uh, fertility and the blue and green countries have lower, country, lower fertility, you can see a pattern, right? Wealthy countries like the United States, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Norway, Ireland tend to have low fertility rates, right? Whereas uh, countries that don't have as much money, like uh, Madagascar or India, right, tend to have higher fertility rates on average, right? This is a pattern that we can see uh, uh, pretty starkly in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, what I want to leave you with uh, is this question. As the country, uh, as the world uh, continues to grow, uh, what's going to happen to a world population as, the, as these countries become more wealthy? Because uh, if we look at this map, the United States wasn't always super wealthy. You go back 200 years in time, we were not that wealthy. And, and that's going to be true for some of these um, lighter and color countries as well. They are getting richer. They are growing. They are expanding their resources and becoming more of a world power than, than prior. Uh, so as these countries continue, whoops, as these countries continue to become wealthier, what's going to happen to the world population? Uh, bring your questions to class and I will see you next time.